Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited. Today, I've got actress Hannah Halland with me. So welcome, Hannah. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here. We were supposed to talk last week, and I had a little hiccup, and I couldn't make it, and you were nice enough to reschedule, and it's like you're you're in London, and it's like two in the morning or something crazy over there. No, not, not that. It's nine o'clock right now, but <laughs> believe me, I'll still be up at two o'clock, so even if you did want to go at two, I would do it anytime. <laughs> See, uh, the younger generation, and I was like that too when I was in my 20s, we stay up, or you stay up all night. I'm so bad. Like, I'm it gets, as mental. you get older, it starts creeping back. I know, but, you know, I was in um, Miami, like, two weeks ago, and I was like, because I'm such a night owl here, when I went over there, I was getting up early in the morning because, obviously, the time difference. And yeah. I was like, maybe if I move to America, I'll be... A morning person. Maybe that's what I need to do. I'm just a night over here. Yeah, just come over here and we'll straighten yeah. out. I know. That won't happen. Yeah. No oh, well. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so London question or an England <laughs> question. Go ahead. What's your, what's your food? What's your favorite food that you eat over there? Oh, well, I'm originally from Scotland. I just okay. Now for... 10 years but in I can hear a little bit of it yeah people people can't place it sometimes but I think I'm pretty Scottish like considering I've been here so I can long, hear it. definitely still got the Scottish accent but in Scotland our like national food is called a haggis which yeah is, I've heard of haggis it's, it's horrible I hate it but it's like, well it sounds horrible it's not nice. It's like sheep intestine, with like oats, like wrapped in it. No, I don't want any of that. What What are you eating? That's That's what I'll try. Oh my um, I love like, oh gosh, that's a hard question. I love food. So like really anything. We've got so much culture in London. So obviously you can get really good, like authentic foods from certain places. 
I live in like um not too far from central, so I'd say one of my favorite places to go is this place called Burger and Lobster. It's not very traditional English food though. It's like <laughs> that's all right. Lobsters and burgers, and then yeah, I, got, I love that. that sounds like American food. Yeah, it is. It is it's similar. I think you've got one in America as well, a burger and lobster. But yeah, no, I'm not too big into like fish and chips or like any of that battered do you, food. Do you eat so, beans with your breakfast? Oh, I love a bean. I love beans on toast. Okay. I love beans on toast. I okay. literally have um, my flatmate tonight. She made us like this like bean wrap. It was really nice. It was like um black beans and like all this like fancy stuff it was okay lovely. yeah that's I pretty love- good i i like it with breakfast too yeah i love i love a love a heinz bean love that one of my faves good old staple meal <laughs> <laughs> well the staples that's like comfort food yeah 100 so when you're when you're upset or you're depressed or anything that's what you go for it's comfort yeah food. beans beans just beans <laughs> any beans give them to me i love them <laughs> They're healthy. Yeah. Beans, beans, they're good for your heart. That's right. That's right. There's another part to that, but I won't say it. That's right. They're... That's right. They have they have some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Hannah, let's start uh, this way. Tell me a little bit about what got you into acting. You know, it's a difficult field. Why do you want to go into the entertainment business? So, I started dancing. That was like where oh. it all began. I started Did dancing. you do all the dances or did you specialize? I did everything like when I was younger. So when um my mum's dad passed away, like when I was about four, and he said yeah. to my mum, Hannah, um, said to my my mum, Lindsay, he was like, You need to get her into dancing and I want her to do Highland dancing, which is a type of like Scottish dance. Yeah. So I went to this dance school and then I started doing Highland dancing once a week when I was like three or four. And then it got progressively more I started doing everything and then I started competing and then dance just like took over my life like my parents were just like you know bombarded with just dance everywhere I would dance around the devil like the dinner table I would dance to school I would dance everywhere (laughs) stop me is is Highland dance is it like leg heavy or is it more? Very. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was yeah. a lot of legs. Yeah, it's a lot of legs that you got to have strong new legs. So I would like do that. And like you do like, there's loads of different kinds of it. So you'd have different like dances. Yeah. So you would do that at the, um, like the Highland shows. So you would go and do that. And then you'd have your dance competitions, which was different. Yeah. So there were two separate things. Um, but I started doing all of that. And then progressively it just got more and more and my mom and dad were like where is she gonna go next <laughs> it's like we can't just keep keep dancing and keep dancing and um, lead so to somewhere mom, is what they were saying yeah it got to lead to somewhere because I was always like whenever I used to dance like I would just I just loved being on stage I loved performing for people and they were like there was something different about it, it wasn't just like I was dancing because like some of the kids would go on and they would just you know, dance to the music. Yeah. I was on stage performing. Like, that was my favorite thing. Like, I'd say to my mom and dad, like, I would dance to the empty seats. Oh, I would I dance that. to the people there. So I would dance to the empty seats. And then they were like, right, what are we going to do? So they sat down with my dance teacher and they were like, where can we go from here? Like, what's the next step? And they were like, well, you could, we could do start doing like musical theater. So I, audition for musical theater in the west end so I started auditioning for that when I was like nine or ten and then I booked a job in London so dancing job I'm guessing it was musical theater so I did Charlie Chocolate Factory I played Veruca Salt um oh you did that's a good role yeah so I played her for two years on the west end and then from there it went to I decided I was going to move down here permanently so I was 10 I was like I'm not going back to Scotland I'm staying down here so um I went to Sylvia Young Theatre School which is like a really amazing prestigious school in London which like the best some of the best people in the world have been there like 
Amy Winehouse, she went there. Like oh, it was yeah? just it was amazing. So I trained. Have you there. seen the movie yet? I've not seen it yet. I haven't but either. I've heard amazing things about it. I really want to see it. Yeah. So yeah, it all just progressed from there. It all happened so quickly. And now I'm here and I, I always thought I was gonna do musical theatre. Yeah. And then lockdown happened and I was like this was when I started to audition for like um like you would say like dance college or yeah. like music theater college and then I was like to my parents I was like I'm just gonna audition for one acting school because like my parents were like you're not gonna do straight acting you're such a good dancer let's right. you know we don't want to let that <laughs> well they hadn't seen you act yet though yeah, they hadn't seen me act but they always knew that like it was always more about the performance element to the dance than the actual dance itself. So, yeah, I was like, I auditioned for one drama school and then I decided I was going to drama school and I was going to be an actor. So that was it. See, really. That to me says it was meant to be because it you were a dancer and then me. all of a sudden it just switched because you found what you were really supposed to do. I always knew I wanted to act I always like I would always watch films I was such like I grew up like watching films constantly and I always was like this is amazing and I just I don't know it's, it's something there's something different about film and television to yeah. being on stage and if I could just like mix everything together I would but I mean I just I love acting I love being like in the moment with someone and having that amazing yeah. connection so yeah that's what took me down the acting roads very very long story but there you go well no um, it's, it's really uh, not and it's kind of interesting because I like the the switch have you got to use dancing with your acting yet outside of the theater I'm assuming you've done a little bit of theater um not not like no not really one of um when we were doing our show reels in our last year of drama school, I decided I was going to do like a ballet. Yeah. Piece. Um, but yeah, I, I, I danced a little bit in it, but I don't think we actually used it in the show reel. But yeah, my dancing since then is really, I've not really danced as much. Yeah. I'm more just focused on acting. Well, you got a new career you're working on. Yeah, completely different, but so in the performing arts and just like industry i guess so i got I, okay I, this is my pitch mm -hmm. this, is, this will be our movie that we're or maybe it's a tv show could be a tv show okay so you're you're a dancer but you have a horrible accident i won't respond to that so well, you don't have to if you don't want to <laughs> <laughs> laugh all the time like in the middle of the night sorry that was such a terrible time for him to hey, go he's, he's very then. adamant he doesn't he will not respond to, <laughs> not that. Respond to that i was like i haven't even got the idea out yet <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. right please so you're a dancer you've had a uh -huh. horrible accident you can't dance uh -huh. it you had to give it up and you're just <laughs> devastated you've got nothing you had nothing else planned for your life and you accidentally fall into solving crime that's my pitch. At some point, you'd have to be like you'd have to be in a situation where you'd have to use like a dance move to get out of it. Yeah. You know, because you're not able to dance anymore, but maybe you can do whatever. And then but you get out. Dance of it. well is so like there's so much like bodily stuff. I know. And also, like, I think crime, you know, you need to know people's body language. Yeah. You know, maybe there's something in there. Oh, I think there's something there. We could work with that. Like she, maybe she's a, like, you know, the people that are like body um, language analysts. Maybe she's that. Yeah, maybe. that. I like that. That's maybe a good angle. Language from her from her dance experience. See, we're, we're brainstorming now, but we're going to be very upset if somebody comes out with this idea and we're going to be like, hey. I know. Thanks Next for watching time. the podcast, but don't steal our <laughs> ideas. Oh, <laughs> that's ours. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's a great idea. I'd love to do that. I think we I'd could love... do it. Yeah, but dance, I, uh... there was a lot of that dance though. Like that was another thing that really kind of turned me away from it was I was getting injured a lot because I danced from oh, such a young yeah, age. Hard. I was constantly getting injured. Like 
when I was about to go down to London to start performing for my show um, on the West End, I was and I was at the physio every week because I had stress fractures. I had like 12 stress fractures oh, in one awful. foot. Those are and so then, painful too. So bad. And then my Achilles um, twisted and then my like arch was collapsed. I had so many issues. You needed to be a, an actor, I think. Yeah. But it is, it's such a regimented and sh like amazing art form. Yeah. But yeah, the injuries are just, you know, it comes with my, it. Uh, my oldest was a dancer and, and she danced till she went to college and kind of the same thing. She Her body was so beat up that yeah. uh, um, she she had to give it up. She uh, uh, she used to get uh, shin splints real bad. Was that? So just it's painful. So but I, I used to love going to the competitions. Of course, they took all day long. Yeah. You know, you're not there for 20 minutes. You're there all day. You're all day. And you're only there for your child. <laughs> it was dancing it was two or three times. I know. It's my mom was a school teacher. My mom's a head teacher. So she wasn't able to come to any of any of them really. Like she would be able to come if it was on a weekend, but sometimes yeah. they were during the week. So it would be my dad that took took me. And he would sit at he's the back. Dance dad. Oh, at da he's a dance dad. He would sit in the back you know, on his laptop. And then as soon as I came on, he would shut the laptop and he'd be watching. And then obviously he couldn't get into the, like the changing rooms to help me get changed or anything. Right. So I'd yeah. That's kind of like a uh, dance mom. That's their main role. It's the costume. Oh, I know. I, know. Hair. I loved that show as a kid. I loved them. They came and saw Charlie and I met Abby Lee Miller and all of them. And I was like, Oh my gosh. I was like, starstruck. Yeah, I bet I would be loved it but it's very it was very real it's very very real oh and yeah so I was like because you feel like it's part of your life because I saw all of that growing up yeah yeah, yeah it's probably hard to move on mm. from that I would think yeah 100% yeah so so you got a new movie coming out mm -hmm. yeah like Friday on Friday, Which is yeah. just uh, amazing that it's coming out so fast. But it's called The Watchers mm -hmm. with that. So I saw that uh, come through. Um, it's um, Dakota Fanning. Is that uh, who's starring in it? So yeah. so tell me a little bit about... So I saw it come through, and that's kind of how I do the podcast. I see something comes out, and now I go, look. I was like, well, let me see who's in it. And, that, mm -hmm. and you were the first person I stopped on. I was like, I'm going to try to get Hannah. And you were nice enough to come on. Thank you. Um, I don't know too much about the film. Um, mm. but what's your role in it? That might be the easiest way to do it. So I don't know what I can actually say and what. I yeah, yeah. Don't say. give yourself. Don't give anything away. I don't want to get you in trouble. Uh, it's not my part. Isn't part of the main storyline though. Right. Like I think it's um, it's not a very, it's a little part. I have. I don't have a huge part in it. Um, but it's not part of their storyline about the wa the watchers and being watched or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, but more of an Irish story, right? Yeah, it's there's kind of like a Irish. Yeah, they're trapped in the Irish woods or something like that, and they're being stalked. Yeah, we, actually, because... we filmed in Ireland, so it was nice yeah. to be there. It was beautiful. We stayed are in the, the is it based on like? folklore or is it just an yeah, original story it's, yeah that's what i figured yeah it's based on like irish fort fort call i can't say that word fort call <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is kind of tricky folk folklore is how i say it but um but yeah no it's based on that and then obviously i've read the full script and whatnot mm -hmm. but i don't know what i can say and what i can't say but my part isn't involved in the main storyline. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's your so what's your part? What how do we get to um to know uh, your character? So my character is called Chloe, um, and she's part. I think, you, I think you make a good Chloe. That fits. I think because the people we were filming with, so we we were a separate part to like the main cast. We yeah. Were a separate thing. And uh, obviously, we all had our individual names, but we all almost suited our fake name more than our real name. So we all ended up calling each other 
the fake name because we were just like it made more sense. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, because that's that's your character. That's yeah, what I see. Be most of the time like, when you're together. But yeah, when they one of my costumes was very much like brats for like Chloe from Black like Bratz and I was like, oh I love this. Like the it was it was brilliant. <laughs> I know um, Chloe from Bratz. I had, yeah. I had daughters. I know. She was my idol growing up. So <laughs> when they were like, okay, so one of your references is going to be Chloe from Bratz. I was like, yeah, please. I will take that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's. Um, All I really remember from the Bratz is they had kind of big eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And they were cool. They were fashionable girls. They were very fashionable. Kind of yeah. like a very fashionable Barbie type of. Yeah. Yeah, very vibe, but um, I don't really know what else I can really say. It's the the main characters are watching us. Let's say that. Oh, okay, okay. Now that, that's interesting. Like, that's not giving too much away. But, yeah, 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 but that's interesting because I I wouldn't have thought that. Okay, so it's all about being watched. Yeah, it's kind of um. Like it seems like it has some some horror elements and some science fiction fantasy type elements as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see it. I, I think um, I think we're going to go at some point this weekend. You know, we'll we'll take uh, we'll get the crew together and kind of kind of go check it out. Yeah, I have like I love M Night Shyamalan. I love him and his yeah. daughter. Oh my gosh, she is amazing. When is, she, what was her part in this? Did she write it? Is that um? So she directed. Oh, she directed. Okay. And she, oh, she's amazing. She I've is heard that. The most beautiful soul ever. Like she's gorgeous. Like when I saw her, I was like, oh gosh, you're the most stunning person ever. And <laughs> she's just so like connective. Like she just wants to speak to you, and like really like she's an amazing director. She's beautiful. I cannot wait to see what else she does. I think she's that's amazing. Just, yeah, she's her, really just getting started. I know. And I was just like, I was such a big fan of her dad's, obviously. Yeah. I loved Split with James McAvoy. That was like one of my favorite. I was going to ask you which one was your, oh. your favorite. That was a good and one. That all came together after Split about like glass and unbreakable. I was like, oh my gosh, biggest twist. Who oh my gosh, it? yeah. I accept him. No one. <laughs> so I was just like, oh. Uh, so being able to work with his daughter was just being uh, working with Ishi was just a, a dream. A dream. That's awesome. Yeah. I had heard she was really talented as a director. Yeah, she's so talented. She's so, so talented and just such a lovely person. Yeah. She's so lovely and so down to earth. Well, so you're kind of just getting started with your career. How did how did the role come about? Was it just go and audition, or did you have to send the tape in? Um, so I I sent the tape in, but I've got an amazing team behind me. Like I've got Dan, who you've been. Oh yeah, to. Dan. Yeah, he's terrific. My American representation. He is top notch. Yeah, he's super easy to work with. Over here, I have Lindsay, um, and she works at Revolution Tower, which is an agency over here. And the both of them together, Dream Team. I love them with my That's whole awesome. heart. Like, I couldn't ask for a better team to like back me. Like, they literally are like, I couldn't ask for anyone better. That's what you need, especially when you're starting out. You need experienced 100%. people that can help a little bit. A hundred percent, and they're just so like. They they don't care for me just as an actor, but they care for nice. me as a person as well. Like they really are just you know always there for me whenever I need them, and they're just the they're best. Looking out for you. I know, and I just can't wait for us to all grow together, and hopefully yeah. I'll make them proud. And that's all. I oh, want. I'm sure. I'm sure that the way they talk about you, they they obviously see the talent. And that's, I have no doubt that they're, they're thrilled with the relationship just like you are. Mm. <laughs> so, so you, you, you got the role mm -hmm. for the watchers. How long was the shoot? We only shot for like two, two, one day, two days. That's fast. Yeah, it was very quick. But when you see it, you'll understand why. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious. 
don't know how much I can say. I don't want to get in trouble. No, no, no. You got to be careful. I don't want you to get in trouble. Uh, yeah. It just means it just means at some point you got to come back so that we can actually yeah. talk about it. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, you don't want to say anything that's going to. I mean, as a fan, we want to know everything, but we also want to be surprised, which is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of surprising things in it, like. Mm -hmm. obviously, Apparently, she's a lot like her dad when it comes to that type of movie. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. I have like I don't know how much the script has changed throughout shooting. Yeah. But from what I read, I was just like blown away. Like I was just yeah, like that's cool. Being able to have that script in my hand and read it and be like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a film. This is just I was just I was like in awe. <laughs> Not too bad for your it, well, I guess it wasn't your first film, but one of your early films, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. My second. Your like, second uh, film. Yeah, because what was the name of the Was it Arthur's Whiskey? Yes, Arthur's Whiskey. Which, had, you were like young Susan. It, yeah. it had Diane Keaton in it. Had no idea. I know, she's great. So we had um, Diane Keaton, Patricia Hodge, and oh. then Lou. Wow. The, the three ladies, they're amazing. All three of them are just outstanding. As a, as a young actress, it had to be kind of neat getting to spend some time with experienced female actors that has to be helpful because they've already been through everything a hundred percent like it was just such a it was my first job mm -hmm. and I was still in drama school when we shot so it was very daunting like I had a lot of imposter syndrome like walking the set. <laughs> I get that what am I doing it had to be kind of a confidence boost too though right because you got the job yeah. while you're still in school. That's a good thing. Yeah, it was it was a big boost, obviously, but it was also like very daunting in the fact, like, do I know what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm gonna be shown to the world and people are gonna comment on it and people are gonna see this. Like mm. you never and you never know what a film's gonna turn out like until you see the final product. No, well, that's just, true. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of it has to do with how they cut it. Yeah, no. Cut it, edit it. The yeah. way they put sound on top of it, yeah, like all that. It was just like I have no idea, like what I'm doing. <laughs> but I had a great time. I was just so I was just such an like awe to be there. Like that's I was just there the whole time. Like anytime I'm on a film set, I'm just so happy to be there. It's like one of my favorite places to be in the world. You know, being in that trailer and then going yeah, to cool. set. And then, being with the whole crew and all the cast, it's just like there's no better feeling in the world. Yeah. Like honestly, just being a part of an ensemble and a part of a family like that, it's just it's just otherworldly. Like there's no way to describe it. I get the nerves ahead of time, but once you're done, once it's finished, then do you feel better about it? Or are you is it still just nerves because then you gotta wait on it coming out? Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of nerves. Like there was a lot of like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember what I've did done. Did you get to? Did you get to do a like a red carpet event? Um, we did like a little like intimate one with like all the cast and crew. We didn't do like a big press one, um, which was nice because I think I would have been even more scared. <laughs> if we yeah, did. but you get to dress up. You get a you know go get a fancy dress or whatever. Yeah, but it was very, you know. It was nice to have that just like intimate viewing experience because it was my first time seeing myself on screen. Oh, right. So yeah. I was like, I don't know how I was going to feel about it because obviously I'm very different to the way they presented right. me on the film. So I was like, oh my gosh, I had short hair. I had like, you know, no makeup for most of it and I was like and they had me in like these some of these clothes that were just like not my fit or style at all and I was like I don't know how I'm gonna feel about seeing myself <laughs> but okay, so it, how was it when you saw yourself it was such a surreal experience and then I was just I, like I really tried not to critique myself because I was like they're like every single thing I was like oh my gosh oh you can see my double chin oh my hair looks bad. <laughs> oh, like that's not what it's about. No one's looking at me the way I'm looking at myself. That's right. I keep reminding myself. But that they're not comparing you to your actual self. 
yeah no not at all and I was like this it's not about that like acting should never be about you know the vanity like it should never be about how you agree unless you're playing a very vain character which my character was not she was a old lady turned into a younger lady's body and it was just like that's not what this is about at all so I just had to like pocket that and be like this is not what this is about you need to view this from a very different perspective and I found a lot of peace in it and I was kind of like even though this isn't how I present myself this is how the character does and this is this isn't me this is a character that's right and I was like it was very liberating experience to be able to just be free because I had a lot of fun on set and I was really like just free with everything and I just that's a good lesson to learn right I I mean because going forward maybe you don't have quite those same feelings Mm -hmm. yeah because but it is difficult because you see that sometimes you get you know whatever nice looking actor you want to pick but they at some point they play that role where they they kind of uh look kind of rough you know they, yeah. they kind of make it so that they look kind of rough and that, i figure they have trouble with that too it's difficult yeah. seeing yourself look bad even if it's just makeup or, or lack yeah. of makeup <laughs> yeah, it was like la- it was lack of makeup and lack of sleep because yeah we were filming like every day um, like early in the morning and as I said I'm a night owl so I was getting like two hours of sleep <laughs> under my eyes were they wouldn't switch to a night shoot for you <laughs> I didn't have that kind of authority no, maybe, maybe down the road but not now maybe down the road. <laughs> um but yeah it was like I was just like oh gosh like I was running on no sleep and it, towards the end of the, the shoot you could definitely tell that I was not sleeping I was like, yeah. this doesn't look good. Well, you were tired by then. <laughs> I was getting tired. But you have to turn that aside. Like, you have to be like, no, I'm not tired. I'm very much awake. I've had my nine hours of sleep like my character would. So. Your character's really, probably well-rested. She's definitely well-rested. She's ha- She she sleeps. She definitely slept. She wasn't a night owl like me. <laughs> yeah. It's a very different experience and, like, very teaching hundred percent i learned so much well you're learning how to um how to kind of go through those experiences because you got to prepare a little bit to be on set even if it's for a short time but if you've ever done it you know you're going to have all the nerves and all at least if you've done it a few times when you go in maybe you've eliminated some of the unknown yeah you'll still be nervous but at least you know what exactly is coming If I was to walk onto a set tomorrow, I'd feel a lot more comfortable than I yeah. did the first day I walked onto. Yeah. After- <laughs> I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> is, there, um, is there a genre that you haven't got to do that you would like to do? Oh, gosh. I just love film. I, I love, I would literally do... I'm trying to think. I love. I mean, what do you think about comedy? Do you do you is that something you want to do, or are you nervous about that? Because you know, I mean, comedy can be kind of hard. I I love comedy. Yeah, me too. I love love comedy films. I love all films, like to be honest. But I'd love, I would love to do action at some point down the line. Oh, with your background with dance, you should be able to do some action. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, or just. I'm trying to think of other things. Did you have to train any for the watchers? Was there anything you had to train no. for? Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, there um definitely action or even like crime, you know, like a good BBC yeah. crime. Was, oh yeah. BBC does crime better than anybody. Oh uh, we do I mean, good. really? Love it. Crime. That was like the first foreign content we got was probably British, and it uh, most of it was crime dramas, and they were all good. They're all great. They're great. Like, I love binge watching all of the the BBC crime genre. Anything I love, no. I love it. No, do you got a favorite? You got one you um, like? The Bodyguard. Don't know if you've seen. Oh, that. I have seen that one. Um, uh, the Game of Thrones. <laughs> Rob. Rob Stark. Yeah. yeah. Richard Madden, Scottish actor. That's a good one. He's brilliant. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. that whole 
show. I'm a, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, but more from the books, not the show. I, I love the show, but I was really a fan of the books. And Rob Stark was my favorite character. So when they when they got rid of Rob, it about killed me in the books. I was prepared on the show somewhat, but in the books. And then he did such a good job playing him. Mm. He's a he's, he's a great an, actor. He's an amazing actor. Yeah, he's that's a good one. There's a, there's one that it only kind of came out every couple of years, but there's like six seasons. Absolutely loved it. Um, oh, what's it? Um, what's it called? Call of Duty? Not Call of Duty. What's it called? No, it's something like that though, and I can't. The name is escaping me, but I know you know what it is. Line of Duty, maybe. Line of Duty. That's it. Yeah. Call of Duty. Oh, that's, that a, that's a video game. Wrong thing. No, yeah, Line of Duty. That's what it's called. That's a great show as well. That's a good show. I think the because they only you know it was only coming out every couple of years and it's like six episodes, mm. it's very quick, but yeah. they're they're so good and then it they kind of loosely tie together through the whole show. Mm. Each season kind of loosely ties. I don't know. It was a great show. Mm. I'm surprised that nobody in the U.S. has tried to remake that show yet because that's kind of mm. what we do. You know, we see something that's good somewhere else and we're like, well, we can make that here. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see it. I know. That's a good show. And it had great guest scars. You know, the the like the people coming in just for a season, unbelievable. You wouldn't be able to shoot it in America though, because you have such sunny skies. Yeah, that's like that's why it works so well here because we're always kind of dreary. Very and dreary and very like mysterious. Whereas when you go over to America, it's just blue skies, pretty That's true. You've got like uh moors and you know, yeah. places with fog and <laughs> they'll just look kind of, you know, a little creepy. Yeah, it does look a bit creepy. Yeah. But I mean, America's got everything as well, though. Like, you guys have yeah. beaches to s- mountains you can ski on. Like, yeah. what? Yeah, we've got what? some ski. I'm in uh, West Virginia here in the in the state. So we're kind of more toward the middle, maybe a little off middle. Um, but we've got skiing here and if if you like outdoors, West Virginia's the place because you can you can mountain climb, you can whitewater rafts, zip line, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I'm not really an outdoors type. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like some of it. Whitewater rafting is pretty fun, but I prefer, you know, I'm more of the entertainment type. Yeah. You know, I kind of like kind of do this. Mm, better both for me. I like being outside. I love like and when I go back to Scotland, we do like my family we have like a little boat and oh, we do yeah, like nice. the, um we do like jet skiing and we do like mm. mono skiing and knee boarding and all that weight boarding would be great that sounds so, pretty good one yeah. of these days i've always said i uh, scotland is at the top of my bucket list of places to visit so whenever i get over there you got to give me some advice on what I to will do, do. You've got a very warm welcome. Come whenever you want. Yeah, I'm not. I'm ready. I'm surprised I haven't been there yet because it's somewhere I've always kind of wanted to, and I don't know why, but I've always wanted to check it out. Um, But yeah, I'm going to make it there at some point. We tried a couple times. Like we were going to go in 2018 was my 10 year wedding anniversary, so we were going to go, and um, my wife got sick and had to have surgery. So we, we scrapped it. And then 2020, my brother was living in uh, Germany. So we were going to go visit him and then bounce around from there. And of course it was 2020. So, <laughs> so we still haven't made it yet, but it, it's coming at some point we're going on. <laughs> 100%. Go in the summer though. I wouldn't say go in the winter unless you want to be freezing. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cold. how it is in West Virginia too. It's so cold in the winter. Mm. And, and hot and humid in the summer. Mm. Like, who planned this? This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dude. Well, Hannah, thank you for taking a little bit of time. I, I, was, I was so excited to talk with you. The movie's The Watchers. It's out uh, Friday, which would be, what, the 7th, I think, June the 7th. Um, it looks great. And just like all of, uh, uh, I guess, I was going to say his movies, but now it's her movie. They're all a little twisty, and it's difficult to say exactly what you're watching. But at the end of it, you're like, oh, that was great. Because you know it's going to be twisty. Mm. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty great. At, at, we have to do it, though. You have to come back 
maybe in a few months that we got to talk, actually talk through the movie. Oh, hopefully, hopefully have another job that I can tell you about as well. Oh, I'm sure you will. I, I think you're just getting, <laughs> you got lots more coming. This is, we'll probably talk 20 more times over the course of your career. <laughs> I got in early. So, so, you know, now I can just kind of, as you advance through your career, I'm, I'm already here. <laughs> so when you need something, you're like, oh, I need to, I need to promote this. Oh, here you go. I know this podcaster. <laughs> so, so a couple of things oh, Hannah, before, uh, before we wrap up, um, I'm assuming you're auditioning for stuff now. Is there in, anything that you can kind of give us a, uh, uh, something to watch for? Are you working on anything right now? Um, currently, maybe I don't know. There's a few things. Maybe potentially we'll wait and see. Um, but obviously, if there is anything, I'll keep you in the loop yeah. or on. Not that yeah, I and that was my next one was, you know, where can we find you on social media? Because, yeah, I'm sure you'll put it out there once you're able. Yeah, I do. I have an Instagram that I don't use very much, but it's at Hannah and then O-W-L-E-N-D. Um, if you do want to follow me, but I don't, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. I know you're going to have to get um, better at that, you know. No, you got you to post your set photos, you know, behind the scenes and, and what you're eating. We all want to know that. You know, I'm just, so, I'm so bad with social media. You wouldn't think I was 21 years of age. You would never believe it. Yeah, that, so bad. you're, you're like the only 21 year old that's bad at social media. I know, I'm just so terrible. I'm so terrible. I don't know why. I just can't do it. Well, you're know. probably better off. I mean, most of us are on their phones and social media too much anyway. But, you know, if you're going mm -hmm. in the, the entertainment business, you got to throw a photo up once in a while. Know, you need to get do. you a person. I know. I yeah. will do. I need, one of those, I need one of those people that do it for you. I yeah, yeah. No <laughs> then you don't have to do anything. They just throw stuff up for you. I know. Well, hopefully one day I will start posting more. It will be... Some down, time down the line, I will start posting. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. I think this movie's going to come out, and you're going to get a little more known, and it's just going to snowball. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It'll work. <laughs> well, thank you, Hannah. And please do, at any time, open invitation. Just come back whenever, whenever you're ready. We'll be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, awesome. you're so welcome. Uh, hold on one second. Anna Howland, hopefully I'm not uh, butchering uh, uh, her name, but she was terrific. She's just getting started. Um, the movie's The Watchers. It comes out June the uh, 7th. It stars Dakota Fanning and an unbelievable cast. Um, Hannah's part's a little bigger than than what you uh, uh, might think. She's pretty high up on the, uh, the call list, uh, but it's fairly new for us. Uh, uh, her second film, she's... Um, you know, she's kind of getting used to the uh, process, but I think her acting strong enough, we're going to see so much more from her. I super happy that we got uh, got a chance to uh, to talk with her, and she's so nice, just uh, just terrific. Thank you guys so so much. Uh, if you're finding us for the first time, appreciate that. A um, couple of easy ways that uh, that you can support us: our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Please subscribe; helps us a ton. Um, our website is meistercon.com. You can uh, find um, out if we're doing something in studio, if we're going on location, covering a convention, anything we got going on, it's on the uh, website meistercon.com. You can also find almost 800 episodes of content, audio and video. So please check those out. Appreciate you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. 
We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple of easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.